I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the news du jour, a calmer space to consume the news. So today, because it's Monday, I just wanted to issue like a a word of encouragement here at the top. Don't let Monday be a bad day. Don't let Monday get you down. Don't let it get the best of you. You have a lot you're facing right now. You are going to make a list, you're going to tackle this week, and you're going to do great, um, whether that is doing the bare minimum or, you know, smashing it and going the extra mile. I know that you guys are doing your very best, and Monday is just another day. In fact, it can be such a great day so many times if you're doing something you love and diving headfirst into a career that you're excited about. Let's carry that energy into this week if we can, because there's so much going on in the world and it's heavy, but we can bring a little bit of brightness into whatever space we are going to be occupying this week. And if you have that in you, you should. Everyone's feeling a little bit darker lately, so I just wanted to really encourage you guys to stay positive and really enter this week with a good outlook, a positive outlook, and try and bring that light with you. Um, Anywho, for today's episode, we have some Trump updates, like Trump-related things, and then I'm going to update you guys on Jim Jordan and the search for the Speaker of the House, and then we will go ahead and head into our updates on the war. So first and foremost, we have to discuss a new update with the Georgia case. So Kenneth Chesbro has pled guilty And basically, this is a man, again, by the name of Kenneth Chesbro, who was the other defendant besides Sidney Powell in the Trump Georgia case that had invoked the right to a speedy trial. This means that Kenneth and Sidney, they wanted to get their trial over with. They said, we want to go first. We really want this over with. So they were scheduled to go to trial on October 23rd, which is today. But instead, both were offered plea deals that they accepted. Both are pleading guilty and agreeing to testify against all the other defendants in this case. I think total there's 18. He was sentenced to five years probation uh, for pleading guilty to one of the seven felony charges against him, which is a pretty good deal, it sounds like. I'm not sure how it would exactly stack up against Sydney's, but I know she did get a whole year more of probation and her seemed to have more strings attached. So I don't know if her charges were just more serious, but either way, both have taken a plea deal. Neither of their trials are going to be starting today, which we were, you know, kind of highly anticipating. So this is definitely juicy and there's more and more people turning on Trump in this case by the day. And then again, as with the other two people who have pled guilty in this case, Kenneth will be required to testify truthfully against these other defendants. If he is found to be lying to prosecutors, his deal could be revoked. So we'll definitely keep you guys posted all along the way. And then for our next story, Trump fined from a gag order. So One of the many Trump updates that I've simply not been able to fit into previous episodes in like the past few weeks has been that there was actually a gag order issued against him by the judge in one of his cases, specifically that civil fraud case that's going on in the state of New York. Since the time that they did that last week, Trump has already violated that gag order and he's been fined $5,000 for the violation. Now, if someone is held in contempt of court, 
they could be held in jail. The judge had that as an option when this gag order was violated, but instead they chose to simply warn former President Trump not to violate that gag order again and fine him. Um, and if he does violate it, violate it again, he could for sure potentially face jail time. I mean, this is, again, it's kind of up to the judge what he's going to tolerate. Uh, but this is very normal. As a reminder, it's very normal not to be allowed to talk about a court proceeding outside of the court. That happens quite a bit. And President Trump here is being treated like other defendants. So we'll see if he can keep his mouth shut and we'll definitely keep you guys posted. And for our next story, before we jump into everything going on with the war, Jim Jordan fails a third vote. So behind closed doors, Jim Jordan has now failed a third vote to try and win the speakership. There are now 10 other Republicans vying for this position. 10, you guys. But Jim Jordan vows that he is going to remain in this race despite his three failed attempts at the gavel. Kevin McCarthy, who, if you guys remember, he was the one who was just ousted from being Speaker of the House. He said he is endorsing a candidate that we honestly hadn't heard of yet, but his name is Tom Emmer of Indiana. He's from South Bend, and he's currently the House Whip. It's hard to deny that there is a power vacuum right now in the Republican Party. You know, there aren't really good options here. And a lot of the House members are drooling over this open position. So as always, we'll definitely keep you guys posted. And as we have emphasized in past episodes, this situation really can put lives in danger when there is a war going on and the United States is involved, even peripherally in the conflict. You know, we have budget measures that are looking, President Biden's looking to get passed, and that can't happen when the House is stalled out. So this is really important that it gets decided on. And next up for today, we're going to spend the rest of the episode basically going over some updates in the war in Israel. I do have to issue a content warning. This story involves war and a likely hate crime. So we have some Israel updates. Two hostages were released by Hamas. It was a mother-daughter pair. They are American Israeli hostages. And Hamas put out a statement saying that the mother had been in ill health. And that is part of why they released them. They had been visiting family in Israel for the holiday when they were abducted. They spoke to President Biden after they were released. Qatar was actually pivotal in negotiating their release. And in fact, Qatar has actually been an important negotiator in a number of recent diplomatic efforts in the Middle East with the U.S. If you remember <laughs> back to the six billion dollars, like the bane of my existence, but that six billion dollars actually transferred hands through Qatar on its way to Iran when that was a thing. So Basically, Qatar has worked as really an ally of the United States in brokering deals with, um, you know, further conservative uh, Sharia law type Middle Eastern countries. We don't know the status of the 199, you know, 198 other hostages that are being held by Hamas. There may even be more than we know about. I think that keeps happening. We keep finding out about more and more hostages that they have. But as always, we are praying for their safe release back to their families. Next up in news about the war, aid trucks were finally allowed into Gaza. However, you guys, there were only 20 trucks that were sent in for millions of people. Millions. So, Everyone's pretty much saying this just isn't enough, guys. For example, according to the New York Times, prior to October 7th, prior to the attack by Hamas, 500 trucks a day were entering Gaza to provide aid. 500. And this was before all of the devastation, you know, after before all of this time had passed. So 20 trucks is really nothing. And 
it's just not near enough aid and everyone is in really dire need in Gaza. So let's just keep our prayers up and, you know, pressure on leadership to get aid to the people who are literally starving and, you know, thirsty and really in need of medical supplies and fuel and all those things to live life. (laughs) So these are life sustaining measures that, um, you know, we've already put in place, but we just need to put into action. The United States, as per the New York Times, has also sent its top sanctions official, Brian Nelson, to Saudi Arabia and Qatar. And this is in order to gain more knowledge about Hamas's cash flow, basically to figure out how to best cut off financial ties to the United States through sanctions and basically disrupt their cash flow. Because if it makes sense like this, they're not able to blow things up and hide and all of these things do the malicious things they're planning to do if they don't have the funds with which to do them. It's that simple. So Brian Nelson, again, is headed to Saudi Arabia and Qatar to learn more about Hamas's cash flow. And then to end off today's episode, unfortunately, I need to tell you guys about a rabbi who was stabbed outside her home. So a 40-year-old rabbi in Detroit, Michigan, was found stabbed to death outside her home. Whether or not this was a hate crime is actually still being investigated, but it definitely looks likely. She was actually known to have been someone who was brokering good relationships between the Muslim community in Detroit and the Jewish community. And that relationship, unfortunately, now has led people to believe she may have been killed for related reasons. That said, law enforcement encouraged everyone not to jump to conclusions as they gather the facts of this case because a killer may have been using that situation to make it look like it was a hate crime when maybe it wasn't. Again, if they had, you know, conclusive facts about this, I think it would have come out by now. So it may be more nuanced than we know, but I'm definitely going to keep you guys posted on this unfolding case. May her memory be a blessing. And that is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, the most dangerous creation of any society is the man who has nothing to lose. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review on that platform or a shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us to be able to keep creating the news du jour and reach more people who need a calmer space to consume the news. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. And that is also linked in our show notes. You can follow us on social media at news du jour dot podcast on both Instagram and TikTok. You can follow my personal account at it's Annie Bowles on both platforms as well. Any little noises you may hear in the background are my rescue pup. He has a little separation anxiety and always records with me. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.